Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. And uh, this is basically my War Bonnet Ridge Runner. It's a double layer. And I think it's from the end of 2019 or early 2020, I can't recall. It's been a while. Anyway, so what I'm trying to do today is to reduce the length of uh, the leg side dog bones because um, <coughs> the dog bones are much longer than the bar of the uh, leg side. And just to give you an idea, the head side bar, the long one, the black one, the very fat one, uh, well, let's take a piece out. So this is how thick the head side bar is and this is how thick the leg side bar is. And basically, you can actually store them one inside the other, I guess that's the intention, right? But basically, the head side bar, when it is put together, is uh, 100 and a half, 100.5 centimeters long. And when this is put together, it is 71 and a half. Let me just get that measured out. I'm just going to do this in centimeters and throw it up on the screen in inches. 72 and a half centimeters. So what happens when uh, these dog bones are installed on the head side, they, are, they basically form an equilateral triangle. That means all three sides, the two dog bones and the spreader bar are of equal length, more or less. Uh, if you check out the ratios, the, they are like 1.01 .01 the length of this, which is uh, negligible. These are about 108 centimeters long from um, the tip of the dog bone to the tip of the eye splice just before the knot which uh, is basically what forms a triangle so however when the same length of dog bones are used on the leg side it is uh, it forms an isosceles triangle so basically the dog bones are much longer than the spreader bar here at the bottom so that causes the hammock uh, and the uh, triangles of dog bones to be well, not significantly, but quite a few inches longer than it could be if we were to shorten this down to make this uh, into the foot side into an equilateral triangle as well. So, just to give you an idea, uh, what I'm planning to do now is to shorten the foot side dog bone down to, since this is 72, I'll make it probably about 74 centimeters, uh, just to be a little bit extra. And basically what I do, the way I work my suspension is I use uh, this kind of stainless steel three hole tensioners. Uh, they're very nice and rounded on the side. Uh, each of this is half an ounce. And that's how I uh, hang my hammock. I just use a single straight line of 764 Dyneema. I don't have a whoopee sling. I don't have a strap or anything like that. It's quite simple. So um, these eye splices, uh, they are four centimeters, I think. What are they now? Yeah, they're just, just shy of four centimeters and they loop onto the tensioner just nice and the other one doubles on top of it. So I think I'll stick to this uh, four centimeter measurement. So if we take the isosceles triangle uh, with 108 centimeter dog bones and a 72 and a half centimeter spreader bar, the length from the spreader bar to the tip of the tensioner at uh, around here, is 102 centimeters and if we make it 75 centimeters long slightly uh, longer than um, an equilateral triangle but uh, essentially that and that would be basically making the ends of the loops uh, of the spliced eye over here so cutting down this much the equilateral triangle will basically be 65 centimeters so uh, the reduction of length in just a triangle for that would be uh, about 15 inches which is extremely significant I would think it's the difference between needing a 13 foot tarp and needing a 12 foot tarp which is uh, quite which is I wouldn't say standard but it is the standard long tarp that we normally get a 13 foot is a, normally a bit of an unusual thing war bonnet makes it and stuff like that but a 12 foot tarp is, tarp is very common uh, even hammer gear India Dynema the, the standard would fit so if we could get the Rich, uh, rich runner to be uh, shorter by just about even 10 inches or so, it would more easily fit into a lot more tops. So let's get into um, modifying it. So this is how I basically loop the head in of my uh, rich runner onto the three hole tensioner. And let's start working on the other side.
So I do apologize, it's difficult to get the whole thing into the screen at this point because I don't have a very large working area. I'll try to show as much as I can. What I'll be using today to do the splicing is the same thing I use all the time. It's uh, basically surgical locking tweezers to uh, pick and pull. I will be using uh, just normal guitar wire number two string. And uh, this is uh, just a pointy tweezer to split the fibers. All right, so let's get to it. So what I'm going to do is replicate the berry length for this. That's original. And the berry length here, excluding the lock brummel, is 10 centimeters. So the lock has another well, three quarter centimeter. I'll give it one centimeter later. So this is uh, 10 centimeters, and 764 generally loses about 10 percent of it is of its length uh, when you double up the line or when you bury a line. So the bury will have to be 11 centimeters to achieve a final length of 10 centimeters. Then there is uh, one centimeter for the locked lock brummel, and then there's four centimeters plus another four centimeters, so that's eight. So bringing in the opened, let's get that out of the way, the open line and start measuring. I will be measuring from the inside, is that in screen? Let's get it on screen in the middle. From the inside of this eye, uh, which has been spliced into the line because that is where the triangle starts. So I'm bringing it up to 75, which is here. And I've actually marked it with a marker pen previously but I would need to give it another one centimeter for the berry, uh, the losses of the berry, so that's 76. And I would need to give it another one centimeter for the lock brummel, 77. So we're going to get 77, okay, 77. So this is where I'm going to fold it. Let's start marking. And they say it is very important to get uh, the length of these extremely accurate. Uh, that is true. I'll mark this out and later I'll explain a little bit extra about why it is not so important. Okay, so that's 77. Fold back. And now we measure 4cm back. So that's 4cm. Ended up there. And mark. Yeah, so this is where we're going to put in our lock brummel, All right? And then, this is the long line, I've got to measure 11 centimeters here. And this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it 13 because I'm going to leave the tail hanging out and once I'm satisfied with the performance, I'm going to cut off the tail later. Like I said earlier, um, it is easy to disassemble these things. So I'm just going to leave it in. Alright, so that's that. Um, where is that? That is here. Okay, so first step, 77 to the step, right? Um, Let's splice this open. Let's look for a hole. Got myself a hole right on the dot here. And as always, I say when you go through, just check. Got equal fibers on both sides. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Okay, so it's not equal. I'm gonna pull one more fiber over. So let's look again. Yep. And this looks about right. And I'm splitting hairs. This should supposed to be going over that side. All right, anyway. That's good. Pull it open. Use my locking tweezer to just poke its head through. Uh, over there. And pull the tail through. Okay. And any long rumble, you pull the tail through and all right, so uh, as I showed in my previous video about uh, making splicing a lock brummel, uh, this situation would be the fixed end type where 
I could open this uh, end which is um, lux headed onto the loop of the hammock but it is easier in a sense to just um, do the fixed end method so basically you've already I've already got this here wide open you come up through you pinch the top of your loop and pull the entire loop through right takes a little bit of doing but the loop comes through and now you have a loop with uh, the part which, which you would bury that has a kink so you get the kink out it's quite simple uh, this is once again why I like this just tuck your tweezers through here pinch it and pull and now this will flip that kink out there you go and now you have your locked brummel without pulling the other side through all right so let's just check if we have a four centimeter loop here otherwise you can always rework it oh shoot miscalculated it's only three centimeters how good is that too small see so mistake i'm gonna have to rework this and to rework this is not bad you just have to pull it out Um, sorry, pull the, so it's just a reverse method, go through, pinch the loop, pull it out, through the top, remember to correct this, straighten it out, fibers all straight and good massage them into place, that's good, pull this out, so that was here, all right so just double checking on that, I'm gonna work five back now, that was my mistake, the losses to a Brummel is about one centimeter, so if we, look, if we work five back, we should be good. Um, Alright, so that's that, drive back. So starting up again, split the fibers, look for a hole, I see a nice one over there. So, so it is a little bit difficult, if you're re reworking a line just be patient, it'll come out, don't worry about it. There we go, so that's five, just to, yep, run the tweezer through it. Pinch, pull, hold, okay, next, somewhere here, where it comes out, and where it'll go in, so it'll go in somewhere, right about here, push it open, find the hole, yeah, fresh line is the easiest, but use line is still perfectly workable, just gotta be patient. Real patient. Fresh line just pops normally. Use line, you gotta work it. Okay. Damaged a few fibers there, but I think we are not worse for wear. So take this through, pinch the loop, pull the loop through, all that, flip this up, there we go, pull it through, go in from the top, get some space. in from the top, down, pull the line through, grab, pull, flip, good. So now, we should have a 4 plus, just a hair over 4 centimeters long, after we've locked up the brummel nicely. Yep, 4 and a third. 
So the next part is to measure 13 centimeters on the berry because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave tail out so that if I do need to revert to the 108 centimeter dog bone, I can rebuild it. But if I'm okay and I need to um, cut it short, I need them to be the line to be exiting a little bit further so I can compress uh, the berry, cut back my line and milk it down so that it can disappear inside. I'll make another video if I do eventually do that. I hope I will be able to. So that's 13 centimeters here. So I will have two centimeters uh, to to handle my berry because one centimeter will be lost to expansion. Okay, let's do 14. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've done the Brummel, I'm gonna measure 14 centimeters from the split. Pop that open. Check out that. Check that out. Fresh line pops so easily. That's why it's so easy to splice fresh line, but old line is still doable. Just takes a little bit of patience because it's softened up. It's been mashed about a bit, so try and always try and come out on the side where the line is going to enter, so the line doesn't need to twist too much. Don't come out in the wrong place. And I see a nice spot here somewhere. Here we go in. All right. Since this has not been tapered. It is going to be a bit difficult. I wonder how they actually do this themselves. I think I'm going to just, uh, just use some scissors or something just to get a bit of the fuzz off. There we go. Not easy to cut the stuff. A little bit more fuzz here. Let's get rid of a little bit. Get rid of a little bit more fuzz. It's always just getting it past this entry is the issue. So let's just work it slowly. Hopefully it goes. All right, it's coming through. All right, that's good. Pull it through, slow and easy. Nice and taut all the way through. Brummel is good. And milk it down. So now, it should work just fine. Yep. Okay. I have a hair over four centimeter loop and that's the length of my dog bone. 74, huh, after all the losses I've got 74, I'm probably going to get a, a little bit out of the uh, berry once it's tightened up nicely, but 74, 75, it's a good thing I did 77 just now, 72 and a half, I'm almost, uh, almost a perfect equilateral triangle now. Okay, now for the next one, uh, this is how you disassemble an existing splice. First things first, you look at where the line goes into the berry. It's here, and you can actually do this with your hand. Let's just get that there. So basically you can see the line goes into the berry there, if I'm not mistaken. It should be here. Just start to pull slowly. Um, squish it up a bit, right? Uh, to loosen up the Chinese finger trap effect. Not sure what else you call it, the constriction effect. Pull it out, start it. There we go. Here it's coming out. And you just work it out. And it's out. Alright, so as you can see, once again, no tape at all. Horrible. Then the next part, I'll just straighten that line out. You need to disassemble this. So You can basically pull this over here. So if you've got a couple of uh, things you need to flip out, right? So you'll have to flip this one out. Just 
go in, pinch, pull, there you go, one. Oh, I shouldn't have made it so, hope I've got this right, go in here, pinch. Ah, try not to make it tight like I did, harder, right, pull, and now you've got it out. Always going from the back of the kink. So now you've recovered your line, and I'll just do the same thing. I measure 77, five centimeters, so on and so forth. We can speed it up. Let's hope it's the same. 74, thereabouts. And the other one is, well, let's just pull the two together and see what we get, right? What's this? Okay, there's maybe a quarter CM between the two, slightly. All right, so, my next point, why it doesn't really matter and have, why it doesn't really need to be exactly the same. So the argument between uh, of having this exactly the same, I've heard uh, different um, hammock, bridge hammock makers talk about each of this being exactly the same, it is paramount that you have them perfectly the same, is that the load is distributed equally between the two, uh, two lines uh, in the, and two points of the spreader bar and across the side. But in reality, um, how should I put it? We never sleep perfectly in the middle of the hammock, right? So if we sleep on one side of the hammock, naturally this side will take more line, uh, more load, and uh, this dog bone and this dog bone on this side will take more load. When you sit on the hammock, uh, let's say here, and you're facing out and you're using it as a seat, the, the side of the hammock that is under your legs will take almost all of your load. The back line will take negligible, maybe 20% at most. So that Line, side of the hammock plus these two dog bones on the side which you're sitting will take most of the load. So yes, it is good to get them as close as you can, but like this one has like a quarter of a centimeter difference. It's not going to make a difference because even when you shift your weight left to right, you are going to tilt your hammock a little bit. So get them as close as you can, but don't fret over it being absolutely perfect as some people mention it has to be. So as you can see here now, I've left these lines just hanging out here. Uh, if the system works, I have a berry here of, um, well, 11 centimeters, thereabouts. I'll probably just cut it back a little bit and just tuck it in. I'll taper, put a tiny taper, I'll basically just pull this out, cut it out, pull it back through, and I'll be golden, right? So that's what I plan to do for now. For now, it's just hanging out here. Uh, as a backup and the way I basically loop these things on is I just put one over here and then I stack the other on top of it. So that's how my hammock is set up. I'll give it a test run and I'll let you guys know how it turns out but yeah uh, this will save me more than a foot in ridge line length so I should be able to use my 12 foot top with uh, quite some margin to spare. So guys, uh, thanks for watching. I'll keep you all updated on the progress of this and hopefully uh, this turns out to be a good modification. And once again, Bob on, please, please taper the tails in your berry. It feels really bad here. There's a huge concentration of force at this very point. So guys, thanks for watching again and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.